and this southwestern region of China remains at the cutting edge of some of the technological issues for the new Silk Road as well as the old Silk Road. The juxtaposition of these solar panels underneath this mountain range tells a good story. Economic development takes a lot of energy and few countries understand this in the way China does. And while many in the West might think of China as the world's biggest polluter, they're not the world's biggest polluter per head of population. That honour remains with Australia. And China is investing more in solar technology as a proportion of their economy than Australia is. They're investing more in wind as a proportion of their economy than Australia is. A few years ago, China started to degrid some of their basic infrastructure, like streetlights. And many of them now have their own solar panel and their own windmill, generating all the electricity that's needed to fire the streetlights with small batteries held underground. Underground because batteries don't work well in cold weather, and this gets to minus 30. So China is investing heavily in cold weather battery technology as well. And when you see this going up all throughout China, you wonder why Australia doesn't degrid a lot of their basic infrastructure. LED streetlights can well and truly run on freestanding power, either by wind or by solar. And indeed, just a few weeks ago, both China and the United States were criticising Australia's greenhouse policy and its inability to meet the Paris targets. We emit more greenhouse gases per head of population than everybody else, and we are now lagging behind China in environmental standards. Think about that. More than any other country, China understands the fine balance between energy usage and economic development, and then as a middle class grows, the desire of the middle class to have clean air and clean nature. And it is one of the ongoing challenges for China to ensure that economic progress and environmental progress go hand in hand. And it's a fine balance for them to transition away from fossil fuels and into renewable energy whilst not upsetting the economic growth strategy that they have. Whether they can achieve this fine balance is a critical issue for the entire